So I want to talk a little bit about uh, what's called parametric equations. And they're called parametric uh, because they, they have a parameter in them, basically. Um, so let me give you a, a simple example. Let's say I said that x equals uh, t squared plus 1 and y equals 2t. Um, and I'll just say right now that uh, t is my parameter. Notice that I have this variable t, and when it takes on certain values, um, it affects the values of, of x and y. And right now I'll just say uh, negative 1 is less than t. I'll just bound t so it has to happen between some certain values. So x and y, I, I can think of that, you know, that's just a, just a point, x and y. So I can think of my x and my y as being location and space. And then my t as being a parameter. Um, one way to think about it is it's a certain time when it's at that spot. So for example, when t is 0, and it doesn't have to be time, but it's a convenient way to think of it. But when, when t is 0, whatever t is measuring, plug in a 0 here, 0 squared plus 1, x must be 1. 2 times 0 is 0. So when t is 0, x is 1, y is 0. So you can think about that. You know, that's a, that's a point, x is 1, y is 0. Or when t is 1, uh, 1 squared plus 1 is 2. 2 times 1 is 2. It, uh, x is 2 and y is 2, so these points. So notice this is when t is 0, this is when t is 1, and I could keep graphing points this way, and I could go the other way when t is negative 1. Um, negative 1 squared is 1 plus 1 is 2. Plug the negative 1 in here into the y part. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. So that would be 2, negative 2. So this is when t is negative 1. And I could keep graphing points like that and trace out and get some sort of path for it. Yeah, you know, t could be a half, right? I could start plugging those values in and seeing how it fills in on the graph. So that's the idea behind the uh, parametric equations. You have a parameter, you have a third variable that drives the other ones. And we'll say third because we only have three in this case. It couldn't be more. Um, so t is the parameter, but it is the thing that drives the other two variables. Uh, so let's take this one that we just did. Uh, notice that this is in the form x, y, so we're going to write them this way, but sometimes they're written as points. So instead of saying x equals that and y equals that, we just put the t squared uh, plus 1 in the x part of the point and the 2t in the y part of the point. Now let's graph that on Desmos and uh, see what happens. Uh, I think I had to go from negative 1 to 3. And you can see that when t is negative 1, we're here. When t is 0, we're here. See how this traces along. It's all these points at the same time, but through these other t values. Um, and let's, let's widen this out a little bit. Let's have it go from negative 3 to 3, or from negative 5 to 3, or from negative 5 to 5. And you can start to see how this is just a para uh, parabola on its side, uh, which is kind of interesting, actually. And... Let me think about that. x equals t squared plus 1, y equals 2t. You know, I could take this and solve it for, for t. Yeah, divide both, both sides by 2. So t equals y, y over 2. And I'll plug that into here. So x equals y squared over 4 plus 1, which is the same as 1 fourth y squared plus plus one, which would be like a parabola on its side. Now the now you might be being like, I can write it this way. Why do I worry about writing as a parameter? Because what this parameter allows me to do, this parametric form, is it allows me to bring in some third variable that's controlling the other two variables, like time or maybe like uh, amount of food introduced versus a couple of populations, you can, anything you can think of. So there's some parametric equations uh, I've got a kind of interesting one that, that I want to think about. So let's say that uh, x was equal to 3 times cosine of t, and y was equal to, let's say also 3 times sine of t. Now before I go to graph this, because I know I could just graph it in Desmos, um, let me do a little bit of analysis on it. So, you know, this idea of like solving for t, I don't want it in, I don't want my equation in terms of inverse cosine. That would just be a mess. Uh, so here's a trick. 
uh, really a technique, and it's super clever. We know that, that cosine squared plus sine squared equals, yeah, you can say it, 1, um, that Pythagorean identity. So if I could, let me think about this. If I take this equation right here, I'm going to get cosine all alone. So divide both sides by the 3. x over 3 equals cosine. And then I'm going to square it, so I have a cosine squared. So cosine squared then must equal x squared, whoa, x squared over 3 squared, 9. Similarly with sine, same sort of thing, divides both sides by 3, y over 3 equals sine, square both sides, sine squared equals y squared over 9. Okay, check this out. That's sine squared, so that could take the place of that. Uh, this right here is cosine squared, so that could take the place of that in my equation. So I know that x squared over 9 plus y squared over 9 equals 1. Look at this, I have a conic, right? I have an ellipse, actually a collapsed ellipse, because my minor and my major uh, foci are both the same, which means it must be a circle with a radius of 3 right because that's 3 squared let me graph this and take a peek at it so i had uh, 3 times cosine of t 3 times sine of t and look at that and what's great about this is if i if i recognize this cosine squared plus sine squared i can see right there's my radius 3 right there coming off of that center okay let's mess around with this and so instead of maybe them both being three, what if this was a five? Ooh, yeah. Now I'm going to start to get ellipses. And notice that um, the x that has the three cosine t, I'm offset from the center by three in the x direction. And with the y, this part that's in the y, I'm offset by five in the y direction. And you know, if we, we switch sine and cosine, and maybe even spell them correctly, doesn't matter sine squared plus cosine squared is one and it's still five in the y direction three in the in the x direction so how to get that center off zero zero well let me let me add two to this ah oh, look what it does it shifts it to and right, let me add negative three to this down three so look at that there's my there's my center right there two because that's from the x part negative three from the y part three from sine Five from cosine. You know, let's uh, let's do a little bit of manipulation to that and see if we can't have that make some sense for us. So I'm saying that x equals two plus three sine t and y equals negative three plus five cosine t. When that happened, my my center was was right here at the point. 2, negative 3, which I can see off of there. And I saw that my major radius is 5 in the y direction. My minor radius is 3 in the x direction. And, you know, the scale is is that distance is 1, right? That, that's only, The grid's only half. So let's see why this made an ellipse. So remember, uh, sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. Okay, so I want to get that for both of these. So subtract 2 from both sides. x minus 2 equals 3 times sine t. Divide by 3 to get sine t all alone. So x minus 2 over 3 equals sine t. Square it. So sine squared must equal x minus 2 squared over 9. Or you could leave that as 3 squared. And notice if I do the same thing with the cosine version, I'm going to add 3, divide by 5. So I'd have y plus 3 divided by 5 equals cosine of t. Square it. y plus 3 squared over 5 is cosine squared. And that means that if this is cosine squared, that can take the place of that. This is sine squared. This can take the place of this. And my equation then looks like x minus 2 over 9. Well, that should be a 25, shouldn't it? Because I squared it. Uh, x minus 2 squared over 9, you probably saw that and didn't even say a thing to me, thanks. Plus, 
and then just substitute in the cosine value y plus 3 squared over 25 equals 1 and there it is so I know that if I have any parametric, parametric equation that has a sine and a cosine in it it's gonna make an ellipse yeah okay secant t comma 3 tangent t makes a hyperbola uh, 0 0 and look in the, the offset in the x direction is a 2 so this probably let me uh, let me snip this and draw on it so this probably have this offset of 2 in this direction there's probably an offset of 3 in this direction let's draw that uh, box and see how it does yeah, it looks like it would be if I draw those asymptotes, if I can draw them straight, if I draw those crooked asymptotes. Um, yeah, so offset of 2, offset of 3. So there's something about secant and tangent that gives me a hyperbola. And, uh, well, let's, let's have the same type of approach as we did before. Um, I know that, that sine squared plus cosine squared is one right I know that uh, Pythagorean identity and I remember there's other Pythagorean identities too and you can you can get at them uh, by dividing so I'm, I'm gonna divide everything by this cosine squared so if I divide everything by cosine squared I get sine squared divided by cosine squared sine over cosine is tangent so tangent squared so there's a tangent plus something divided by itself is one 1 divided by cosine, that's secant, secant squared. So uh, notice if I subtract the tangent from both sides, or I could, uh, yeah, or I could subtract the secant. Oh, I'll subtract the tangent from both sides. Secant squared minus tangent squared is 1. Oh, that's fantastic, because now I can do the same sort of thing, where I say x is equal to... 2 secant t, right, that's given here. Divide by 2, x over 2 is secant. Square it, x squared over 4 is secant squared. That could take the place of this. So x squared over 4. And then notice it's minus. And if I do the same thing with tangent, I'm going to end up with y squared over 3 squared over 9 equals 1. And notice because I have the subtraction in here, that relationship between secant square and tangent square, it gives me hyperbola. And again, I have my center here, offset in 2 in that direction, offset of 3 in that direction. Now, notice it's x squared minus y squared, so it goes this direction. So that tells me uh, wherever the secant is going to be would be the first thing, the thing that I'm not subtracting. So the secant is going to give me the direction, right? If tangent and secant are switched here, it's probably going like this. Let's graph another one real quick and just look at the pieces of it. Um, so I will mess this up a little bit. How about I change this to um, 3 plus 4 tan t. Hopefully you're making a prediction about what that adding 3 will be. And then 5 plus uh, 2 secant t oh, look at that i probably should have done this earlier but how about i make this these go by ones turn off those minor grids so let's see where's our center at uh, <laughs> let me try that again so let's see where's our center at here it is it is at the point three five which I can see the 3 plus in the x part, 5 plus in the y part. Secant's in y, so it's going this direction. Um, offset of 2 in the y direction. Offset of 4 in the x direction. 1, 2, 3, 4. And there it is. I can see where all my pieces come from. Just, just for laughs, let me do my manipulation for it. Remember, uh, I did my manipulation before, and I got that secant squared minus tangent squared equals 1, that Pythagorean identity. So I know that x equals 3 plus 4 
times tangent of t. I want to solve this for tangent, so subtract the 3, divide by the 4, square it. There's my tangent squared. And if I grab this part from the y, y equals 5 plus 2 secant squared. I'm right, sorry, just secant t. Subtract the 5, divide by 2, square it. I have secant squared is this y plus 5. So secant squared, I'm sorry, y minus 5 squared over 4 minus tangent squared, which is just this x minus 3 squared over 16 equals 1. And you can see why it makes that. And hopefully you see where all the pieces come from too. It's really easy to see the pieces in this sort of, uh, in this sort of representation. Um, one thing I want you to, to think about, which is I think pretty interesting, um, I'll just go back to this tangent t and the secant t. Um, and I'm, this isn't going to be part of the assignment, but it's kind of fun to mess around with this. Like, what if instead of a secant, this was a sine? How would it change the graph? Right? Or what if instead of a sine, it had a t times sine? And you're going to start to get some crazy graphs. And you see how it see, looks like it stops here and stops here? Why don't I let this run further? How about I let this run from negative uh, 50? Whoa. How about I let it run from negative 10 to 10? See what it does and let it run more. Let it run from negative 100 to 100 and it starts to fill in all these different shapes. So you can really, uh, you know, if you've got a little time on your hand, you know what I think that you do? Uh, you could really mess around with these sorts of things and just, just see what happens. Um, what if instead of tangent that was cosine? I know it should make some sort of circle, but what would it do? Some weird looping thing. I multiply them both by t, I start to get to something like... So anyways, you could do this all day if you are at all like me. All right, I hope that was helpful.